Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 25th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, after we had Henri move into New England, we have more potential storms to monitor. We're nearing the climatological peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, so the next few weeks are typically quite busy, and this year is no exception. We have a few areas we're watching. There's a system up in the central Atlantic that is expected to turn toward the east over the open water and be no danger to land, but that may develop. We also have a wave over the central Atlantic that looks somewhat healthy. That's also expected to turn toward the north harmlessly over water, so we won't really talk about that one today. The one we will talk about is the strong tropical wave in the central Caribbean that is moving toward the west-northwest, and that is likely to become a storm as we head into the weekend as it nears Central America and the Gulf of Mexico. This is a closer-in satellite shot showing a strong wave moving through the Caribbean, and we can immediately see that there's kind of a southeasterly surge on the eastern side in the lower levels, and then you have northeasterly wind on the west side, so you can immediately see how there's a wave axis in here. It is a little bit sharper than that. If you actually look down by Columbia, there's south-southwesterly winds underneath the cirrus at the surface, indicating that there's a sharp kinking of the flow in this area here. So there's a trough axis extending up into this clump of deep convection that shows a little bit of banded curvature in the mid-levels. So you can see some sort of mid-level rotation beginning to show up right about here to the north of Columbia. We can see from an ASCAT pass a couple hours before this video that the wind field is still disorganized, but you can still see that sharp curvature there with south-southwesterlies north of the Colombian coastline, which is there, and then easterlies to the north. So again, that sharp curvature about the wave axis currently oriented southwest to northeast. The other interesting thing to note here is that there's not a lot of screaming easterly trade winds on the north side, only about 20 knots of wind on the north side of the wave, and often there's a lot more wind through the central Caribbean than there currently is. Weaker wind here is actually a sign that the wave is more likely to develop because strong trade winds can suppress development and make it more difficult for a wave to close off and form a circulation. In this kind of situation, it's more likely that the wave will continue to organize in this kind of setup as it moves toward the northwest. One thing to watch for is the presence of this upper low, which is currently over the Bahamas in Cuba, and you can kind of see it outlined here in the big shot, and if I look at the water vapor satellite picture, it'll show up even better. You'll see rotation over the Bahamas. This is all in the upper levels, so this is not itself a threat for tropical development, but you can see what it's doing. It's digging down into the Caribbean. There's dry air there out ahead of the wave, which is currently dubbed Invest 99L, by the way, and we're seeing southwesterly flow aloft encroaching on the western edge of the system. So for the moment, that looks to be imparting light to moderate south or southwesterly shear potentially during the next couple of days as the wave is moving toward the northwest Caribbean. Now this upper trough will be backing away into the Gulf of Mexico westward and gradually weakening over the next few days as upper lows typically do. They typically weaken slowly over time when they're cut off like this in the tropics. And if we look at the model forecasts, we'll see how this kind of evolves. This has been a forecast that has changed a lot in the last couple of days on most modeling. We're starting to figure it out a little bit. This is the GFS low level vorticity or spin in yellow and the low level wind in wind barb. So you can see the wave axis in here in the central Caribbean on Wednesday. And we'll see that eventually kind of tilt more upright. So you'll see a wave axis that rotates to more of a south to north orientation as it passes by Jamaica and moves into the area south of the Cayman Islands on Thursday. And then this continues west-northwestward and you will see a little bit of vorticity generation on the GFS on the northern end of the wave axis. You'll note that there's also some rotation on the southern end of the wave axis and there has been some ambiguity in model forecasts where exactly the system will try to consolidate along this elongated zone of rotation. Now currently on Friday, we're seeing model forecasts like the GFS focus more toward the tip of the Yucatan and leave this stuff behind and focus more on the northern end. Now that is typically what we see. There is usually more vorticity or spin along the northern lobe of a wave axis than down here. So typically we do expect the northern half to become dominant, but there is some ambiguity as to exactly where. Is it a little farther south toward the Gulf of Honduras or a little farther north toward Cuba? That's still a question mark and will be until we see it start to come together in a, a tighter fashion. 
Now on this particular model run, this is able to consolidate near the Yucatan Peninsula and we have what could be a storm on the model by as early as Saturday near the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And if we look at the upper level wind flow during this uh, evolution, we'll see that upper low over the Bahamas. This is going to back westward. Our wave is currently down here. And you'll see that while there is southwesterly flow over the Caribbean, this ends up lightening over time. And so by the time the GFS starts developing a storm near the Yucatan Channel, there's not a, a lot of vertical shear here. There is some, but there's generally anticyclonic outflow expanding outward from where the system is forming. And in general, the environment could be characterized as favorable for development for the wave as it moves toward the Yucatan. And all signs at this point uh, suggest that genesis will occur at some point. NHC gives 80% chance, and the reason they're doing that is because no matter which model you look at, GFS, the European model, which I'll show you in a second, the German model, the Canadian model, they all show development eventually as the wave moves northwestward. And such a strong consensus in the signal lends confidence to the forecast that a storm will result from this setup. The last few storms we had, Fred, Grace, Henri, it was all ambiguous. Some models developed those systems, others did not. In this case, there's strong consensus, and so right now we would term the forecast for development as a high confidence one. This is the European model showing again the wave axis, similar to the GFS, and again, similar to the GFS, we end up focusing on the northern end of the wave near the Cayman Islands and the Yucatan Peninsula, and you can see that on the European model it takes a couple days still to come together. That's the other question mark is exactly when this consolidates. Also where, again, this is a broad area of rotation. And so we won't know a lot of details about the system until we see exactly where and when it starts to come together. But the general idea is similar to the GFS with a storm eventually forming as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico over the course of the weekend. Now, if you look at the GFS ensemble mean upper level flow, 200 millibars on Sunday morning, we have some semblance that a storm will be moving into the central Gulf of Mexico somewhere in the vicinity of the Yucatan Peninsula or just north of there. One of the forecast elements that will come into play is the fact that there's also a storm off your screen developing in the eastern Pacific to the west of Mexico. And often when this happens, there's upper level outflow coming out of that storm and coming out of the west over the Gulf of Mexico. It's possible at this point that this could cause some wind shear over top of 99L as it is developing. And that remains to be seen whether that will become a limitation on the storm and potentially prevent it from intensifying rapidly in the Gulf of Mexico. The environment would likely be favorable otherwise, but how it interacts with that storm to the west of Mexico remains kind of an open question. At the moment, most models expect it to not be able to hold 99L down entirely, and most models show an intensifying storm as it begins to move across the Gulf of Mexico. Now, unfortunately, if we look at the steering pattern here Saturday afternoon on the GFS Ensemble, this is the 500 millibar flow showing that the storm would be near the Yucatan Peninsula by this time. And the steering ridge is over North Carolina, not a typical place for this ridge to be. And unfortunately, what that means is all the steering flow is toward the northwest. And this is likely to direct the storm in the general direction of the northwestern Gulf Coast. This is a highly ambiguous forecast at the moment because it depends entirely on exactly where the storm consolidates. As an example, if it's farther down near Belize, we could see a track that is similar to Hurricane Grace, maybe a little bit farther north, but moving into a double landfall in Mexico kind of situation. If it's really far to the north, to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula, we could even see the, the track bending more toward the central Gulf Coast. And of course, something in between could go in between. So there's, there's quite a swath of possible trajectories that this could take once it launches into the Gulf of Mexico. And since the storm hasn't even formed yet, that adds uncertainty. And it's all about where the storm is by the time it enters the Gulf of Mexico. This is the GFS Ensemble kind of depicting the various cloud of possible locations that this ensemble thinks the storm could form in. This is the Saturday morning envelope of red numbers here showing where the storm could be centered on the model. You can see there's a wide area still. This is not a high confidence forecast in terms of the placement of where the storm will be. The average location is south of Cozumel, but there's a wide area where this could consolidate in. And you'll see that as these move into the Gulf, will end up with that kind of spread where the northern solutions end up moving more north, the southerly solutions move more toward the west. And so you'll get this spread as this moves across the Gulf 
anything like this wide window of possible outcomes. And I'll just show you that as we've gone over the last couple of model runs, we've had some uh, pretty dramatic changes just even a day and a half ago all the solutions were down to the south and we're only just now seeing this realization in model guidance that there could be a more northerly kind of track potentially toward the United States instead of Mexico for a storm like this but again it all comes down to what it's doing here where it is when it consolidates into a storm and whether conditions end up being favorable over the Gulf of Mexico when it does start to make that journey into that body of water. So still some questions to be answered. What we do know and have confidence in is that a storm is likely to eventually form uh, during this weekend time period or early next week as it moves off into the Gulf. Where it goes, still can't tell you, uh, but this is the European Ensemble also showing a cloud of solutions similar to the GFS ensemble that looks concerning for the Gulf Coast, but it is very wide. Details, again, just can't give those to you at this point, but something to start keeping an eye on. This will likely be our next storm, and we'll watch it as it moves toward the Yucatan Peninsula. Of course, as this moves toward the northwest, we'll be watching to see if it can develop quickly enough to bring any significant impacts to places like the Cayman Islands, Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize. If this develops a closed circulation, that would be the sign when we're starting to watch for it to start intensifying. But either way, an area of heavy rain and potential to cause flash flooding will translate into the northwest Caribbean as we approach the weekend. And uh, right now, models suggest it will take some time intensifying. We'll see if that actually holds true, hopefully so, as it nears uh, the northwestern part of the Caribbean. And down the road in Mexico or the northwestern central Gulf Coast of the United States, a lot of ambiguity still, a lot of questions to answer. Before a storm forms, there's, a lot, there's usually a lot of dependence on where it consolidates. And for that reason, we'll see a lot of spread in the potential futures of this on model forecasts and so uncertainty remains high and it typically does uh, before a storm has formed but this is just a reminder that this is the peak of the hurricane season we expect storms to be threatening land areas during this time of year it's a good reminder to have a hurricane plan ready just in case a storm comes your way next week that's it for now thanks for watching